Welcome back. Now this video has been a long time coming and I'm sorry for the delay in getting this one out, but for some reason any rail just kicked my behind on this one. I learned quite a few things about what any rail does and what it doesn't want to do. Now right here from the beginning, I don't know if anybody from any rail ever watches these videos, but if you do, please put in a copy layer command. And I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit on a subject because I just want to point it out here. Now, when I say copy layer command, I mean copy layer. And I'll explain this in another video. And that's one of the things that really made it hard for me to make this video. A copy layer command should include everything that is on that layer. And we're talking lines, track, structures, everything on there should be able to just be copied to a new layer. Instead of having to go through all the rigmarole that I'm going to show you here, how to just copy lines to another layer. Copy layer command people, that's what this program needs. And I'll probably be doing a small rant video about some of the things that AnyRail does that just drives me out of my mind. Anyway, we're going to copy lines, just lines in this video to a new layer. And that's pretty much a real world type of thing that you're going to be doing. So here's a drawing of uh, my railroad. It's sort of an early version. I've been coming up with a lot of different things that I want to do differently on this railroad. So uh, we're just going to use this version here. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn off uh, the structures. And down here I was playing with how to make bench work for a video. And boy, is it difficult. So I'm going to turn off the bench work layer as well. Then I'm going to turn off all of our track. I'm going to set my active layer to the new room outline layer. And I'm going to turn off the track. Okay, so now we have the outline of our room. And this might be something that you want to do. You know, copy the outline of your room. Maybe you have uh, objects in that room, like a if you're in a basement, maybe you have a heater and a water heater and an air conditioner, things like that or you're building into a room that has furniture in it and you want to try different ways of moving it around. You don't want to do different drawings. You just want to be able to have one drawing and then turn layers on and off to try different arrangements. Now quickly, and this is going to be explained in another video, any rail seems to copy lines really well if they're horizontal or vertical. And it will copy those lines whether your measurement settings are in centimeters, millimeters, fractional inches, or decimal inches. When it comes to lines that are at an angle, any rail seems to work really well with millimeters and centimeters because I believe it's speaking its native language there. But it doesn't work all that well with decimal inches or fractional inches. And I'll explain that later on. So here's my drawing. And we'll go to settings and we'll see what kind of settings I have on this drawing. And it looks like it's in fractional inches, which makes sense because I like to work in fractional inches at a sixteenth of an inch. That's why my grid is set to a sixteenth. And for some reason, let's just check here. Yes, fractional inches. My precision is set to one sixty-fourth. So let's set that to one sixteenth. Okay. Now we're going to copy these lines. And I'm going to show you something first before we do the really good copy. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to come over here and we're going to make a new layer. So let's say add layer. Now let's rename this layer. Now my new room outline layer is number one. So let's make this new layer 1.1. .1. So we'll come down here and we'll just rename it. And I just named it new room outline copy one. Or you could say copy one of new room outline. It's up to you, however you want to name it. We'll hit enter. Now we'll arrange them. And there it is right below new room outline, our original drawing, or I should say our original layer. Now we're going to go back, and this is very important. I'll explain this in a little more detail in another video. We're going to go back to our new room outline. We're going to come over here and you'll notice it's all individual lines. So let's do this. We're going to copy everything. We're going to drag it around. 
Now, one good reason for putting other entities on different layers is, you see, I can turn this off. I can turn all these off. So now I'm only looking at the layer I want to copy. You're only going to copy things that are visible. But should you have other entities out here and they're not on a different layer, then you're going to have to do something like this. You're going to have to say there's something right here. Let's put something in right there just so I can show you. Okay, we don't want to copy these buildings, so I'd have to do something like this. Come down here, grab what I can, hold down my control key, and then add like that. I believe if I try and do a box, say I want to do a box around these guys, it's not going to work. Let's see. Yep, see? Killed off that one up there. So get as much as you can. Actually, this would be better, wouldn't it? Let's do it that way. No, nope, missed again. Let's do it this way. Because there was that little thing there that I didn't see. And now I'll hold down the shift, I'm sorry, control key, and I will add in the other entities. That takes a long time. So what I'll do is I'm going to turn off my structures layer, but that's how you could pick your entities. So let's just do this. We're going to drag around there. Okay. Now we're going to come up here, anywhere on the drawing, hold it over one of the lines, right click and say copy. There we go. Okay, now there's another thing I want you to notice. Now when we selected everything, you'll see that it got a bounding box around all the entities. And this is what keeps screwing me up and I think is what's screwing up when you're using fractional and decimal inches. Now we all know from an earlier video that I made the corner of my room here at 12 and 12 for my XY. And that is because I can get a little bit of wiggle room out here to add things in. But you'll notice that our bounding box isn't at 12, 12. It's right here. Now I can look down at the mouse coordinates and I can zoom in on that corner and we can see where it thinks it is. So let's hold the mouse right there and it says it is at 7 and 11. And if we look at our rulers top bottom, it certainly looks like we're at 7 and 11. Anyway, so we have our copy. We're going to now make new room outline copy 1 our active layer. Let's do that. We're going to turn off our original layer. We're going to come over here and I'm going to paste that in. Now you'll notice that it put it close to where I had my mouse cursor. But we want to place this corner right here exactly at a X of 7 and a Y of 11. Now how do we do that? There's nothing here that gives us an ability to type X, Y coordinates. We come up here to groups. No, can't do it that way. Now I could zoom in, I could grab this, and I could try and place that, but you'll notice the bounding box goes away. Isn't that convenient? So I could come up here and I could do something like that. I can zoom in. I can hold down my shift key and I can nudge it in place like that. And that's really the only way that you can do it. Now, hopefully you're at your original coordinates. You can find out by clicking, selecting an endpoint. And we are. We're at 12 and 11 and a half. But that's kind of a clunky way to do it as far as I'm concerned. The other problem with doing it that way, let me zoom back out, is you, if you have all this selected and you zoom in and you're moving it around and you go, oh man, I got to move it a long way and you accidentally deselect like that. Now you got to zoom out and reselect like that. So it's just an added step. So like I said, I think this way is a little clunky. So let's make this go away. Let's go back to new room outline. All right. Now, let's select it again. Now, this time, you'll notice that we get under Tools a tab that says Groups. Actually, we had it last time, but we didn't use it. 
So I'm going to go to this Groups tab. And I'm going to make sure that I am on my original layer. And the reason for that is when I group these objects, it will group that object to whatever layer is active. That's really stupid. It shouldn't group it to the layer that is active. It should group it to the layer that the entity is on. But AnyRail will group it to whatever layer. So if I had the new room outline copy on, now what it, when I group these entities, they'd all move to the new room outline, and we don't want to do that. So anyway, we're going to come up here, and we are going to make these entities one group. So here we go. And you'll notice we get X and Y coordinates of 7 and 11. And height, if we were working in 3D, we would know how high up these, uh, in elevation, these entities are. Now, when you group an entity, let me turn off that bounding box. When you group an entity, I can select anywhere on that entity, and it will select everything. So you notice everything gets highlighted. Text gets fainter. Lines get highlighted. I can select right there. Now I've got the whole thing. So now we've got a group, and we're going to copy that group. I'm just going to do a Control C. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to deselect that first. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to New Room Outline Copy 1. I'm going to turn off New Room Outline. Oh, I forgot to show, I forgot to tell you. Once you group it, write down your X and your Y. I've done this video so many times in practice, I, I kind of forget to tell you that. Uh, write down your X, Y so you know where to put this box back. And remember, that X, Y refers to the corner, upper left corner of that bounding box. It shouldn't really. What it should do is it should say, copy from, and then I could say, copy from end of this line or copy from end of this line. But no, it works with this bounding box. So you have to know where the corner of this bounding box is. OK, now we're going to go to New Room Outline Copy. We're going to turn off our original. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say Paste. You'll notice it's all grouped together. And I've got my XY coordinates up here. So all I have to do now is just go 7, 11, hit enter. There it is. So let me throw this in here as a little aside. There are two ways that any rail reacts when you paste objects back in, and these are grouped objects. The first way you can do it is you can come in here and you can select with right click and say paste. And when you do that, up here, it automatically gives you the tools and the groups tabs. So you can just go straight in and type in your XY coordinates. The other way is like this. I can come in here, I can place my mouse, and I can hit Control V. And you'll notice that it doesn't automatically open the Groups tab up here. You have to come up and select it. And now you get the ability to put in your X, Y coordinates. So if you use Control V when pasting in a grouped objects, you don't get that Groups tab automatically open for you. And it's just another step that you have to do. Now, why is it like that? Well, I think the simplest answer is it's because it's any rail and it does whatever it wants. So let's get back to the original video already in progress. It's now in the proper location and we can uh, confirm that by zooming in. And you'll notice that the endpoints of my lines are right on the 12, 12 mark. Yes, the center of this line is actually at 11 and a half, and we explained that in an earlier video why that is. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and uh, look at the video. I believe it's called Working uh, with Wide Lines or Room Outline with Wide Lines. Stand by. I'll tell you exactly what it is.
Yes, and it's video 12, and it's just called Wide Lines. Anyway, let's get back to this guy. Let's zoom out. All right, so now we have our room outline on our new layer, and we can do whatever we want with that layer. We can turn it off, turn it on whenever we need it. But one thing you're going to want to do is you want to deselect it, come down here, right click on it, and say ungroup. Because if you don't ungroup, it will remain a group. The other thing you need to do is go back to your original layer. Make sure you can see it. I turned off new room outline copy. You'll notice it didn't change over here. I can turn that this layer on and off as much as I want to. And it gets a little darker, but that is because it's in the same place. And I'll show you that in just a second. So we go back to new room outline, and we're going to want to ungroup this guy as well. Okay, let's go back to this corner. Now that I've ungrouped it, this is just a test. Oh, it's the way to make sure that you've got your entities in the right place. I've ungrouped it. They're now individual elements. I can come here and I can look at this endpoint, and the endpoint says 12 and 11 and a half, and we know that's right. I can come over here, I can turn on the new room outline. Nothing really changed. Let me turn off the original, and let me select the endpoint of new room outline. And there we are, 12 and 11 and a half. Now, if you want to get fancy, I mean, you could come in and you could select all your lines. I'm not going to do it because it would take too much time and I could give them a different color. Let's say we want to make them a light turquoise. That sounds good. All right. Now we can then zoom back in. And I'm going to turn the original layer back on. And you'll notice you don't see the original layer at all. That means that this line is directly on top of the original line. I'm going to change that back to red. Stand by. Okay, so that is how to copy lines to a new layer. And like I said, this is a kind of a real world application. My test drawings and videos for moving lines pretty much failed miserably. And that's where I learned a few things about how any rail operates. So we will go over all of those failures in another video. And I'll point it out so that you don't fall into the same trap that I fell into. Now, I believe in the next video, I'm going to show you how to copy uh, buildings, happy little trees, I believe there are drawings of rolling stock will include that. And that's a little bit different again. Well, it's pretty much the same, pretty much the same thing. But we'll do a video on it anyway. And then after that, I'm going to talk to you about what I found on failures in any rail and show you a couple of things there. And like I said, that may save you some time so you don't have to scratch your head like I did and say, what the heck is going on with this program? So let me do a quick review on this. You may not want to listen to this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Remember, you have to turn off your other layers so you only have the items showing that you want to copy. Anything that is not visible turned off on another layer will not copy. You want to select everything. Aha, see, I almost fell into the trap. You want to be on the uh, original layer that you're copying from, you select everything, you then group it, get your XY, go to your new layer, turn off the original layer, paste it in, put in your XY, you're done. That would have made a shorter video, wouldn't it? Oh well. So have fun copying lines to a new layer and I'll see you in the next video.